Welcome to Wesley's channel. This is Wesley's News. Today I'm going to be having Little Genie, which is a young boy who made two videos, and I found these videos interesting enough to bring to your attention. These videos are just the explanation how to tune the resonance circuit in practice. Little Genie, thank you very much for your videos. I thought that it could be given to the people of the world in English language вместе с линком на ваше видео как пример настройки резонансного контура. Спасибо большое. That will be part number two of the series. I'm going to add some pointers, descriptions, explanations, drawings. I hope you're gonna find them helpful. The link to the original video is going to be placed underneath of the picture frame in the description part you're gonna be able to find it only if you are viewing that video from my channel which will be step up one hello everyone i am showing you today a device that i have made for you to be able to see all of the components of the device you need to stop the video and read the description for it on the left hand side you have a big coil, it's 2 times 5 points with the center tap and two capacitors forming square wave signal. And we have two types of generators that we could apply for it, it's Romanov or this pretty nice one, it's almost the same. And a description for the transistor being utilized for it with the spec ship. And power supply. The surprise is that the power supply can draw 264 watts. You got to read what I put there. So now he's going to present what is the voltage from the power grid. The strip that you see on the left hand side is the strip that is connected directly to the wall power. Power reading on his meter fluctuates from 239 volts to 211, probably because of the bad connection. The small coil that is inserted into the big coil is two and a half millimeter square gauge. And uh, you see the bank of capacitor that is already soldered into the end of it in parallel and yes he was mentioning before that he has a 40 kilohertz on that coil and 113.9 on the other so let's go to that part on the video part one he was showing just a coil not connected to the capacitor and he was standing that because the number of points on the small coil is not the fourth part of the wavelength. He doesn't have a resonance. Well, not going deep into it, we see that 4 kilohertz that was shown on the small coil was not corresponding to 113.9 of the frequency on the big coil right from the generator. The reality of life that was explained in part number one is that if signal generator was a sinusoidal signal that would be no change of frequency but only change of the amplitude due to the coupling coefficient and because we're dealing with square wave we could tune to one of the dominating sine wave components of the square wave the output from 24 volts DC power supply is now connected to nanosecond impulse generator and that 
power supply is connected through the plug to the power strip and the power strip takes the power directly from the wall receptacle after we're done then now he's going to connect his voltmeter to the small coil output which has a prestructive error right now as we see connected to the capacitor and here we need a little bit more explanation it shows on the meter right now 235 volts dc well actually he doesn't have a dc at the output of the coil on the left upper part of the drawing you see the square wave with all of the sinusoidal components the more components you have the more like square wave it is on the right hand side you see one of the components that is being induced on the small coil when we're dealing with a full period square wave then two upper drawings left and right applies the left one would be the one from the big coil the right one would be the one from the small coil output if we're dealing with zero volt and 220 volts amplitude or whatever the voltage is then we have a scenario like on this drawing on the left hand side you see the full period on the right hand side you see that the voltage goes the lowest only to zero and here we have a zero line and that zero line shows us that there is no other voltage there viewed closely you see that there is a period of time where zero volt is present and the lower yellow arrow shows the period of time where zero volt is present the upper yellow blinking line would show you when you have 235 volts pulse DC present phase time and the full time of an impulse are the AC components and the very top flat one is the DC component I'm gonna give some explanation to that even with that very dirty signal that we have connection of the small coil to the rectifier give us sort of DC at the output on the right lower corner you can see how the signal looks like after we connect the capacitor for filtering so now if we're talking about the rise time and the fall time which is supposed to be the AC component of the square wave you see that there is a certain time required for the signal to go from the zero point zero volts line to the maximum volt line and that change is our AC component till it goes to the very top where we have a DC the most important for you to memorize from that is that DC direct current cannot be transformed so there would be no induction you need to have an AC component in order to be able to transform anything from one coil to the second so now he takes 200 watts 220 volts light bulb and he connects to the output of the small coil that is connected to the rectifier and is connected to capacitor the bit that he connected is a little bit unclear because at first he was using the pack of the capacitor to tune the coil to the frequency 113.9 kind of spectacular is to see head drill being operated at first directly from the grid and at second from the DC output of the small coil and yes DC armature base motor of the drill works from AC and DC as well so the scenario is very simple 24 volts that we get from the power supply connected to the grid 
is powering nanosecond generator then to the resonance circuit it goes to second coil and the rectifier and goes to the outlet so now what he's doing is he takes another power supply which would be the switching power supply very much typical one the switching power supply will work from the grid and it would work with the DC outlet, the one that you see right now. And he's connected 24 volts automobile light bulb, value 15 watts, to show you that it works. Even though that connecting the drill and the very big light bulb looks spectacular for us to claim any evidence of over unity we need to have at first proper measurement of the inputs if we powering the device from the grid with amp meter connected we need voltmeter connected and then we calculate the power that is drawn from the outlet and then we compare it to the power that is drawn by the load connected to DC output of the system that's how you guys will be able to determine any one of your devices to have net plus energy comparing to energy drawn there's a quite different story with the devices that are self-powered that means you have one single impulse and then you don't use any source of the energy at all because the access of the energy that is being produced is being used simply to power back the device and doing the useful works for us the next we will see is what is the output from the small coil but before the rectifier and you would see the sinusoidal signal which would be one of the dominating sinusoidal components of the compound that makes up the square wave signal however the closer we go to 13.9 kilohertz which is the square wave driving frequency the more dominating sinusoidal components would be able to see and we would be able to fool ourselves if we set the time base on the oscilloscope not the right way the comparison would be the fast bullet from the gun not being able to be seen with the naked eye but it could be seen with a properly tuned fast frame camera the LED from the oscilloscope will now be connected to the rectifier and it will show line that is jumping up and down which up stays for DC voltage presence at 235 volts DC after rectifier however we don't see the ripples here because the time base is incorrectly set the next that we see on this video is again presentation of loss coupling when small coil is retracted and close coupling when the small coil is inside the big coil you wouldn't be able to change the frequency by pulling and pushing in but we would be able to change the amplitude of the voltage that is induced on the small coil tuning to the frequency of the big coil can only be done if we either add the winds to the small coil or we add the capacitor which will add the capacitive reactance that makes that small coil to tune to 13.9 kilohertz for proper evaluation of the equation power in versus power out we need to have again I repeat we need to have monitoring devices on the input from the power grid unless the system powers up itself which means using impulse just to start up and then power circle is by self looping
those monitoring devices are the watt meter, that is with the letter P, and the amp meter, which is with letter A. Or you could look at it from another graph where Z is the load and V stands for the voltmeter and I stands for the amp meter. I'm gonna say a few words in Russian. Дорогой Лера Джини, чтобы было возможно делать какие-нибудь выводы, надо иметь то, что здесь есть показано. Для меня это есть очень хороший велик, отлично сделан, который показывает, как строить резонансную цепь, от чего зависит частота и от чего зависит амплитуда. Большое спасибо. Уэсли, США. Если вам или кому-нибудь мое видео, которое я сделал, будет понадо, пожалуйста, вставите себе ее на ваш сайт. Ну, well, so that's the end of that educational material that I dress up with graphic and my explanation. Because I found the set of those two videos to be very much clean and straightforward for me to comment it. It is, however, not the evidence of over unitive access of energy. As we don't have the proper or properly collected information to stand for, but without understanding that, you simply cannot make it happen. It wouldn't work. I am taking necessary shortcuts while explaining all of the phenomena that are important in the process of creating free energy devices. The term over unity is kind of unfortunate because it stands the above unity access of power. Well, that above unity access of power must come from somewhere. We just don't know what it's coming from. But there is no such thing like magic energy that might be undiscovered energy or not yet recognized, very much known energy that couples to it. Is it working? Do we have free energy device possible to be built? The answer is yes. 100%. Yes. I've seen it. I smell it. I touched it. And I do not make a secret from what I know and what I understand. Apart from few very much valuable things that I keep as my insurance policy. Pretty much knocking down like a hatchet in a head. Thank you very much guys for being with me with that video. I hope it will help many and see you next time. We're gonna continue. We want that happened. This is Wesley and it's Wesley's news.